Hello everybody and welcome back to Season 31 of the Pokemon Cup Series. Today we're here at the Suzuka Circuit in Japan for the running of the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Duel here at Suzuka Circuit. We kick off World Tour 31 here in Japan with a double header here at the East Circuit at the Suzuka Circuit in Japan. And uh, we're covering the ones from the Dunlop into the Casino Hairpin. Pretend that's uh, connected That's connected because uh, the East Course is the only one we're using here for this road course uh, this weekend. Since I couldn't find a regular working full length um, version of the Suzuka Circuit. So we're only using the East, port, the East Course for this weekend. So anyway, it's another doubleheader weekend coming up. We had one in Eldora last time. Then we had our All-Star Race. And now we have ourselves our second dual weekend of the season. The only other weekend which will have two races in one track for the Pokemon Cup Series this season. So two more winners will be um, crowned, so to say, here today after Suzuka. As we kick off World Tour 31 at the world famous Japanese Circuit. It's going to be a fun, fun next couple races as we travel around the world with the best and most interesting tracks the series has to offer. Anyway, here's the entries, by the way, for race number one. There'll be two races, like I said. And since the first race, uh, the first weekend, the first doubleheader we did in Eldora, we had cars numbered 1 to 23 first. So we're going to have those cars go second. And the cars that went second in Eldora, cars number 24 to 96, uh, will go first in this um, weekend in Suzuka just to balance things out. With the exception of the fact Philip Goldberg is going to be in race one again in the number 20. The reason for that is because Goldberg's running um, a new paint scheme. He's running the old, he's running the Matt Kenseth farewell paint scheme. Same for Christian Parker in the 88, and I just want to see these two run together these two paint schemes together in a race so that's the only reason that I put Goldberg in race one because I wanted to see these two schemes go at it um, one at one point or another so the 20 like I said is running the Matt Kenseth um, farewell paint scheme and same for da and same for Christian Parker in the 88 he's gonna be keeping his Dale Jr's last ride paint scheme for the world tour and these two will run th their schemes for the rest of the world tour as a tribute to both Matt Kenseth and Dale Jr. who are not going to be cup drivers anymore after this season. So I thought it would be a great way for them to go out on top for those two drivers uh, to pay tribute to those drivers' careers by having those schemes be run in the World Tour. So it's going to be a lot of fun to do. And a surprise pole setter here in race number one, Kono Tumadre is on the pole position. Running the number 96 today, he'll be one of two drivers running the number 96 here today as th that car will be running both races here in the doubleheader weekend. James Richardson will be on the front row and you'll notice that every car is going to have a new paint scheme. And uh, I wanted to change things up basically for everybody. So everybody's got a new paint scheme to run here in the series. I'm not going to go through all the names but you can pause the video to find out where you start and I'm showing you guys all the paint schemes running in the world tour so now that we've shown you all of it now let's take you trackside for the race itself the weekend begins here in race number one at the Suzuka circuit again a double header weekend here the first of two races and both races running 20 laps each Here we go back to the here we go to the green flag here in the Suzuka circuit the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon duels are underway and a great start by the 96 this track is really 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 tight it is a road course but it's gonna be a real test for these guys a lot of beating and banging usually happens here at this exact track Already a driver is spun. And we got John Andrews, Ethan Sale, and O'Neill Balvin taken out. Oh no. 
Diego Yepes and Grayson Acevedo have been taken out too. Look at Christian Parker running that Dale Jr. last last ride scheme. But Conor Tumadre is going to lead the first lap of the race. So uh, there's the first lap. There's the first Rex here at the Suzuka Circuit. Ethan Sale has just spun out right here as he got onto the grass. He took, he got taken by the 31 car. 31 went up and got hit. How did O'Neill Balvin get hit though? Well, the 27 got loose himself and he spun out right into the S's. Nobody hit him though, so it was weird that he spun out on his own. But, well, that his weekend not off to a good start here with him getting taken out early on. Let's look at Grayson Acevedo and Diego Yepes. Three wide battle, it got really tight. That's how they got spun out. That's how they got spun onto the track. And so Acevedo goes down low and now that that's how he got turned around. So let's take you back to the action. Kono Tumadre leading in his one race deal in the 96. Green flag is back in the air. Question, is Tono Tumadre going to actually win this weekend? It is a possibility. The 96 lately has been the fast car. They just got to find the right driver for it. Here comes James Richardson and Christian Parker battling for second. And Richardson takes second spot away. At least we get to see these two cars battle it out together. Both running uh, tribute schemes to their drivers, Matt Kenseth and Dale Jr. Both running in their last race. So it's really nice to see those two schemes go all at it again in some form or another. Look at Goldberg. He just took second place. We'll see if Parker can take third place. And he is going to take third place from James Richardson. Wow, those schemes are really cool. Second and third place running retro-ish schemes, paying tribute to their old their drivers. And they're both running second and third. Feels like we're going back in time. Uh-oh, 47. Angel Navarro got a little bit off there, but... Diego Yepes on pit road. He was one of the drivers that wrecked down in the first lap. Right now, Conor Tumadre battling out. Look at this. Battle for second between those two cars. There you see Christian Parker is going to get the advantage. Wow. Seeing these two cars race again like old days. Real nice. Parker gets second and now he wants to get that 96 car. Well, now Alexander Rowe running fourth position. He's done a pretty solid job here this season. James Richardson running in the fifth spot. These two already have a win this season. But if Coder Tumadre wins, the 96 won't be eligible to be in the playoffs since they use a different driver every race. But still, though, a win is a win no matter what. So Coder Tumadre can hang on. They'll be more than happy for to uh, possibly give Kono a cup ride next season if he does somehow win this race. Wyatt Walker was really close to winning at that 96 car at Watkins Glen. He was second, by the way, to Steve Morgan. Morgan, though, did get his first win in, that, in the Cup Series in that race, but Wyatt Walker was close to becoming a Cinderella story. Coda to Madre could be that Cinderella story if he can hang on for the win here today. Surprisingly, it's been a tame race. 
Only one caution so far. Usually, um, Suzuka like uh, Suzuka has been known for uh, drivers wrecking left and right. This track is really small. It only uses the east portion of the course, just like how NASCAR ran back in the day for exhibition races here. Now it hosts Pokemon Cup regular season races during the World Tour. It's always a fan favorite because it's a double header weekend. They get two races. They get to see two different races with uh, their drivers. So it's going to be a lot more, a lot less. So it's a lot less congested and allows for bigger opportunities for uh, some low unknown drivers to really win here today. Really get a win in the Cup Series. And look at this, Philip, 20 car, Philip Goldberg. Gonna take revenge on the 88. It's always fun to see these two um, retro looking cars running here in the race. It's real nice. It's like running, it's like ketchup battling mustard. Just had to bring that up. Ooh, little paint rubbing there. Oh, that was nice. They got a little paint rubbing there. A little nudging and budging here. And now the 20 just took second. Really nice. That was real nice. That was worth it. That was all worth it. This race was all worth it just to see those two cars run it all at it. Going face to face. It's too bad they're not battling for the race lead, but... Still, it's really nice to see these two cars battle it out. Parker going to go for the position again. Well, Goldberg already has a win this season, I believe. So, Christian Parker's trying to win for the 88 team. And here we go again. More beating and banging. Who's going to survive from this and the S's? And this time, it's Parker. Parker this time gets the edge. So the most exciting racing so far has been for second and third. And now Goldberg wants revenge. These guys are not giving up. And with this having no call. And now there's a caution. Parker just barely edged out the 20 for the position with 10 laps to go. So there is a caution finally for the second time. And it's Steve Morgan who actually was the winner at the Glen. <laughs> and he actually won the All-Star Race too. So I almost forgot that. Steve Morgan won the All-Star Race in our last weekend. So he was having a great couple of weeks until this happened. And he didn't get... Oh, I believe he was battling with Donovan Duthit for a position. And then he just suddenly lost track. And he hits the wall. He got into the sand. And so did the 38, but Cody Smart, thankfully, was able to stay away from the wall. Unfortunately, Morgan was not able to stay away, and he got crashed. And Angel Navarro had a wreck. What happened to him? Angel Navarro's on pit road too. Major damage on the 47. He must have hit something, or he must have had a car problem. Yeah, I believe he had a problem. Oh, no, he didn't. Chandler Caudill just took out the 47 right here. And no caution came out. There should have been a caution earlier for that crash. But apparently, for some reason, there wasn't. Here it is again from a better view. There's Navarro getting hit by Caudill. And he's done. And he's not getting out. Probably he's not going to get back out on track. With damage like that. And he's done. So here we go. Kono Tumadre is going to have to face off against Christian Parker and Philip Goldberg. Who will be the one that takes advantage? Pace car is going to come out of pit road with just eight laps to go. Will Kono Tumadre hold on for the win in an, in an upset? Or will Christian Parker or Philip Goldberg have the luck of their drivers on their sides and possibly one of them take the win? Here we go. We're back to the green flag here in race one. And Christian Parker's away. 
Christian Parker with a better start than the 96. He wants the lead. Here we go. Oh, 96 is in the grass. See, he spins. Oh, no. The 96 is off the grass and he just got spun. Oh, man. The rookie mistake happens. Oh, wow. The 96 in the wall. Oh, what a shame. Connor Tomadre was running probably the best of any of the of any of the drivers that ran that car this season, only to see it all go up in smoke with a wreck like that. Cautions out again, by the way. Philip Parker, Caudell, and John Andrews, I believe. No, Grayson Acevedo involved. Oh, wow. Huge crash on those three. And but look on the plus side, the Hedrick cars are now running 1-2. So it's nice to see Hedrick running 1-2 in this race. Parker and Rowe both battling for the win as teammates. Rowe already has a win. Question is, will he help out his teammate? It doesn't look like he is. Here he comes. Going to get that start with fun to go. Oh boy, 88 trying to stay in the, in the track, and he does. Battle continues, here comes Rowe, can he take the lead? Oh, bumper to bumper. Parker trying to hang on, and now Joseph Romanock has moved to third place. Oh, Parker loose again. Still trying to hang on over row. And now 32 is going to take advantage. Here we go. Race continues. 32 in second right now. Trying to get it from the 88. Four laps to go at Suzuka. And it looks like they're going to stay alive. Parker still in it to win it. Parker would love to win in that 88 car. Here he comes again. He's going to try to bump out his own teammate. Oh man, now it's getting a little tight. Here we go again. Going to be three to go when we get to the line. Parker and Rowe battling for the lead. And Rowe has given up the lead to Parker. Three to go for Christian Parker. Will he hold on for the win? It would be so special if he were to win a race here in that 88 last ride scheme. I mean, he had a tough battle with Philip Goldberg early on, and now he's trying to win this race. Goldberg's trying to go fourth. Here he comes. Oh, man, more contact, but able to stay... Alive and avoid wrecking. Christian Parker's hoping that a caution does not come out. We would have overtime and things would be insane. If we get overtime, things would be totally insane. Two laps to go in the 88. Christian Parker trying to win for the first time in his career. Philip Parker, I'm not sure if he's related to Christian, but the same last name, Philip, he won in Atlanta. Now Christian trying to win for himself. Here we go. I believe Patrick Smith was one of the winners at Eldora, so an unrelated Robert Smith won two races earlier this season, so it probably is the first time that we got... Two pairs of drivers with the same last name win a race in the sea in this in a season. That's a first here. That's probably going to be a first this season. The Parkers and the Smiths, they have a win each, but Robert though has two. Anyway, white flags in the air. We're still green. They'll stay green, and all Parker has to do now is not mess up. What a day for Christian Parker. Final corners for the 88. 
It'll be a 1-2 finish for Hedrick Motorsports. And they'll try to get another 1-2 finish later today in race 2 with the 5 and 24 running. Oh no, 24 is running in 10th. So all three Hedrick cars in this race running the top 10. But out of turn, out of the final corner, Christian Parker, he's going to finally do it. He's going to win race 1 of the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Duel here at the Suzuka Circuit. So Christian Parker finally becomes a winner in the Pokemon Cup Series. And what a better way to get a win than in that paint scheme, that red old last ride Dale Jr. paint scheme here today at Suzuka. He had battled Philip Goldberg early on and he was able to work his way back up to the front and win today's race, race one. Great, great way to start the weekend. Here are the cars that finished the race. 13 finished the race exactly. Not really bad. Suzuka, we've seen worse. We've seen more cars retire and wreck. But Christian Parker, able to hang on for the race win. Great run for Christian in the 88. He collects the victory in race number one in Suzuka. We'll return with race two coming up. And it's going to be, and hopefully it'll be just as exciting, if not more exciting than what we saw in race one so Christian Parker victory lane for him in the 88 he does it in the old Dale Jr. paint color ride great job for Christian Parker and we'll and we will have race two coming up next alrighty guys here we are back again in race number two at Suzuka we had a great first race earlier now we're gonna have another race coming up to complete the weekend at this track. There you see the entry list on the left of your screen and the pole setter today is the 14 is the 21 of Ying Canario. Rich Roy the 14 will be on the front row and Peachy will run another race here in the number 9 car. He's going to he decided to run another race in Suzuka, Japan. He won at Montegi. He's trying to get a win in Suzuka, so he's back here and he's back here with another chance to get a win this season. Josh Crash is also on that front row, as that same row as well. And you can look at the other drivers with these new paint schemes. Everybody's getting new paint schemes for the World Tour. There's Kalmanoli. He's It's his turn now to ride the 96 earlier today. Kono Tumadra rode that car, won the pole, but crashed out with just a few laps left from the lead. So Kalmanoli hoping to get better luck here today. Eric Martinez there, Jonathan Fast, and the rest of the field. And the rest of the paint schemes they'll be running with. So here we go. Coming up is race two, baby. Who will join Christian Parker in victory lane today? Yin Canari does have experience at the road course. His only win so far has been on a road course in Sonoma. And Rich Roy's trying to capture his first win like Christian Parker did earlier today. A lot of first time winners this season, so we'll see if Rich Roy can add his name to the list. Here we go, Great Flag is out for race two in the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Duel. Oh no, Josh Crash is around, Pichu wrecked him out, but he saves it though, and now they're still wrecking in front of him. The two spins. Oh, what a start to this race. Oh, man. Messy start to the race. And Rich Roy in front. Rich Roy leads. Wow, what a messy start to this race. Avi Sachs is already out. That quick. Green flag back in the air. And Pichu just is going to compete for second. I could have sworn Pichu was going to be out of that race. You just spun out the 18, and yet they're still running in the top five. So weird. I thought they'd be done. You know what? Peach is going to get second place. Not bad. Oh, tight, tight, tight. Peach is in that nine car today, by the way. So it's nice for him to return to the nine car, even though he's running only a handful of races this season. But he's trying to make the most of it. 
Now Sakali going to battle for position as Rich Roy pulls away. Rich Roy doing a pretty good job so far at leading this race. Running cars, like three drivers running cars, three paint schemes here. Might be a little too much, but, well, I decided to run them. Just so that we can run every possible cars, three scheme here in any of all three of my series. Just to get, so, just so we can see them in, in our town three action. Next season, probably going to move to a new mod, so might as well just take the advantage of it. Ooh, Chase Dunbar was off track at one point, but he's able to continue the race. He's not able. He isn't. He hasn't wrecked anyone, and he's still off track. Oh, we might have a problem. I don't know if his steering is off or something. Chase Dunbar is not doing so well. Oh, would you look at this? It's a train of Penske cars. Two, twelve, twenty-two, all running together. You probably will never see this happen again. Look at that. All those Penske cars running in a straight single line. It's just interesting to see them like that. I just always find it interesting to see three of the same cars from the same team run together. It's really cool and it's really a good sight. It's really a nice sight to see. Josh Crash is third place. I thought Ian Canario was going to get loose and spin him out, but. They're going to continue. Close call by those two. Josh Crash looking to win for the third time this season. He's already has two wins to lock him in the playoffs. Now it's just trying to collect wins to collect those playoff points and possibly be the top seed heading into the playoffs. Crash is hoping for some positive points in order to uh, some big points to get him into the play to get playoff points. I'm um, here today. Yin Canario already a win this season. They're trying to win for the second time to lock himself into the playoffs. Not have to worry about being bumped out. At this point, it's going to be a tight battle from here on out. Even with winners, we'll probably have winners that are not in the playoffs. But again, as I've said many times before, a win is still a win. So... They could, they'll be happy to take a win even if um, that win won't get them into the playoffs based on points. But they'll still be more than happy to take a win any day. And Rich Roy is trying to be that one to win. We've had a lot of first-time winners this season. Ian Canario, Philip Parker, Christian Parker, Steve Morgan all had their first wins this season here in Season 31. Rich Roy's trying to add his name to the list. And it would be fitting. Third YouTuber did not want me to have rookies winning races. But I have everybody in even levels. So everybody has a fair shot at winning. It just happens to be this way. So. I try to diverge the ratings a little bit. With the gaps. For every driver, to, so that they would have mis certain mistakes. Some hand, um, several drivers would make certain mistakes and stuff, make it more realistic, make it more wide open. But sometimes, though, it just happens that way, and I'm happy with it. it. Makes the results unpredictable. Makes the races really unpredictable. You never know who truly is going to win a race. And everybody has a fair shot at winning. So, regardless, so it's pretty nice, and it's going to make everybody happy. Rich Roy in front, and he's closing in on lap traffic. That's the 11 of Maxwell Smart. Not running so well. We got, sit, we got like three sets of drivers, three pairs of drivers with the same last name. Possibly some are related, some are not. I, be, I don't believe the Smiths are I believe the Smiths are related. Robert and Patrick Smith, they each have a win. Patrick won Eldora. Robert won two races, however, his wins were encumbered because of spoilers he posted in those wins. And so he will not be eligible for the playoffs. His two wins were encumbered. Those will still count in the history, but won't count to the playoffs. And we also had the other set of brothers that won were the Parkers. Philip, not, 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 I believe, I don't believe they're brothers, but 
Parker, Philip Parker won in Atlanta, and Christian Parker won here in the first race in, the, in Suzuka. So, yeah, there's that fact as well. The Smarts, though, haven't won a race. Neither one has won a race, neither Cody nor Maxwell, even though they're unrelated. But neither, no, none of the Smarts have won, though. Cody is just, Maxwell's just been lapped by Rich Roy, so Rich Roy is going to easily make the pass on the number 11 car. But will Pichu be able to? It looks like Pichu's having a little trouble with passing the 11 car. That could leave the door open for Ian Canario to take second place. And Rich Roy, it's good news for him. He's pulling away. If the caution does not come out, he can at least have a shot. If the caution does not come out, he can pull away. Now Pichu finally gets by him, and now look at Ian Canario run. He's going to take advantage. Here he comes. Ian Canario's going to go for it. He's going to go for second place. Probably Pichu's getting a little old, and he's going to get into the grass and take and get himself out of the race. Oh, Pichu is out. Oh, my goodness. The caution does come out. Oh, wow. That's, that's something that the 14 did not want to see. Oh, man. This race. Wow. Okay, so Rich Roy leads. We'll see if we can hold on over Ying Canario back to green. Six to go. At least we still have a race going. <laughs> wow, Pichu. Wow. He's out already, so we don't have to worry about him trying to win. Rich Roy leading, he's in front again, he got a good start, and a much needed good start for him, so so far, nothing, so far he's done well. Will he hold on over Ying Canario though? Canario's been tough so far, he was lucky to get second from Pichu thanks to lap traffic holding up the 9, and then the 9 just lost concentration and went into the wall and crashed. That's what brought out the caution. But now we'll see if the 14 can hold on. Ooh, ooh, wow. Canario went a little loose there. Josh Crash trying to nudge him out. He's trying to bump him out. And Crash, he's going to do it. Josh Crash, he's going to take second place. Gave him the bad, gave him the bad air. The 18 runs in second. Anthony Lopez into 15, also trying to take third place from Ying. Rich Roy pulls away, he continues to dominate this race from the pole position in the 14. Four laps to go here at Suzuka. Lopez completes the pass on the 21. Went a little bit too high there, but he's able to stay in the race. And Robert Smith running in the fifth position. Another two-time winner, although his wins, as I mentioned earlier, were encumbered. But he still wants to get that third win. Just so he can make his comeback. So just so he can complete his comeback. He was suspended for a couple races for spoiling races, but now he's trying to make a comeback. Three to go. Rich Roy in front. Josh Crash in second place. Crash trying to close on the 14 and possibly win for the third time. Fifteen in third place. It's Lopez. Lopez running really well so far. His season has not been really good, but a top five still. He'll take it any day. There's Robert Smith running fifth. And we're coming to two to go at Suzuka. Rich Roy in front. And he's pulling away. And now he's all he's got to do now is hope that a caution does not come out in the last two laps. And he's got to hope that he doesn't mess up himself.
Robert Smith right on the bumper of the 21. He could get a position away from that car if he can. So far, everybody's been running smoothly. Only two drivers out of the race here in race two. Almost a completely different race from race one. Not bad. Suzuka's been pretty tame this season in terms of wrecking. But at least we got green flag finishes last time. Oh, caution's out. Whoa, I thought I was going to say. This race was tame, but all of a sudden, we see this. Wow, that surprised us. Jonathan Fast and Anthony and Johnny Gardner flipped, and more crashes with Peach with Patrick Smith. Oh my! Two laps to go, and a caution comes out. This race has gotten interesting. Oh man, I just when you think Rich Roy was gonna win. All of a sudden, this happens. Okay, we're going to have overtime here. When we come back, race two, overtime is up next. Well, just when you think this weekend is over, we have overtime here at Suzuka. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be exciting. Here we go. This weekend wraps up with an overtime finish for race number two. Rich Roy trying to hang on over the 18 of Josh Crash. They'll race, they'll run many attempts as possible until we get a green flag finish. So here we go. Going to be close and bunched up again. So we'll see how this will work out. Here we go. Green flag's going to come out here at the Suzuka circuit. Who's going to get the better jump? Oh no, Roy's going off track. Roy's just trying to hang on to the 18. To the S's. Contact! Crash crashes! 14 just wrecked out! Oh my goodness! And a, what a twist! Crash and Roy just spun out on the first lap of overtime! Oh man! That is just gut wrenching for those two drivers! And Ryan Acosta leads back to the caution flag. Oh man, this race will continue. Wow. Oh, that's just gotta hurt for those two. They crashed out, they spun each other out on the first lap of overtime. They were racing real hard. Rich Ward was just trying his best to hang on real tight to that lead. He just got the 18 right here. They crash out. Oh, that's just gut wrenching for those two. My goodness. Oh man, that is just that was just terrible. Oh, but we're gonna get back to the race. We're gonna have another overtime attack. Alrighty, guys, here we are again, right in overtime number two at Suzuka. Kenar Ryan Acosta leads. After a eventful first overtime, the f the leaders wrecked out. Rich Roy and Josh Crash have crashed out. So now it's a different race. It's almost like it's a completely different race now in the final two laps. So who's going to be out in front? We'll see if Acosta will stay as the leader and win this race. Here we go. Back to green at Suzuka. Looks like the 19 has a little bit of the edge. Oh, he's getting on the edge. Oh, he's off track. He's into the grass. Oh, man. 19 in the grass. Now there's contact. 96 just spun out. And they're crashing again. 17, 19, 7, 96. 15 has just spun with the 21. My goodness. More drivers in front have crashed out oh wow man these final laps have just been really insane Joshua Sicully leads back to caution we'll have our third overtime attempt up next 
Alrighty guys, here we are, the third overtime attempt at Tezuka. Ten drivers are left to duke it out for the win. And Joshua Sicully going to lead us to the third overtime here, it's here in race two. It has been a completely different race now because all these leaders have wrecked in the final laps. Green flag is back in the air. Hopefully this time this will be the last attempt. Oh, 3-1 already. Oh, man. Oh, this is real tight. 4-1, crashing again. Now they're wrecking. Oh, my gosh. Hawkins, Dunbar, Martinez, Smart, Lewis. Only four. Five cars, I believe, are left. No. Only two cars have wrecked out, but... You know what? That's it. I'm not going to do another overtime attempt. They're going to keep wrecking like this in Suzuka. I just don't think it's fair. With uh, It's going to be another leader wreck in the next overtime. It's just not going to be right. So, that's it for us. That's This is it. This is the last lap regardless. There will be no other overtime attempt after this. There's just too few cars that were not involved in wreckage to continue. All these four cars are the ones that survived. I don't know if Jared Lewis did survive. I believe he did, but even if, di if he did, there would only be five cars left on track. It's just not... No, he didn't survive. He got involved with a wreck with Maxwell Smart. So only four cars did not wreck at all. I would have to take out all the cars that did not wreck at all in the next overtime just to avoid having like too many overtime attempts not being fair for these guys who are out in front all day. So this is going to be the last lap. This next lap will be the last lap regardless. This is the last overtime attempt as I can't really, I really do not want to do another overtime attempt with too few cars continuing this race. Only four cars would have continued with this race had I gone another attempt and it just wouldn't be fair since we've seen a lot of leaders wreck out it's just a little too much and there's just enough excitement here today um, we've already done three attempts we've already did a, a, a we already did one race earlier so this is gonna go a little a weekend going a little longer than I thought it would be so that's it this is gonna be the race here I'm not gonna do another overtime attempt this is it folks so Joshua Sicully is going to be the winner here in race two since he was out in front when he took the caution flag in this overtime last overtime period so here we go coming down the final turn under caution because there will be too few cars to continue running another overtime attempt they will call this race after this so joshua sicully will come off the final turn and he will be your winner in race number two at the Suzuka Circuit in the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Duel here today. And that and that's it. That's gonna be the race there. Joshua Sicully is your winner. Once and for all, this ra race two is and this weekend in Suzuka is finally over. Probably wouldn't would be great it would be better if to end under green but with all the cars that have wrecked out in overtime there would only be four cars left that haven't wrecked out and that would they would finish the race and it really wouldn't be really it wouldn't really be good if we have only four cars running in the last overtime attempt and of course there'd be no guarantee if those cars wreck out so rather than having like four only four cars finish the race we have the remaining survivors here in the last overtime race three race under and and the race under caution so joshua sicully is your winner in race number two in the pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon duel so that's it that is the race folks and that's the weekend in suzuka it was already wreck filled enough so it's that's more than enough wrecks we can handle here in this weekend since we're doing two races in the same track and I didn't want this video. This video already is going very long, so I didn't want to go even longer. So anyway, that's it here from Suzuka. Joshua Sicully is your winner, and Christian Parker also won, as well. By the way, so th those two will be your winners in the weekend of Suzuka. Next weekend, we'll be heading to Gravis City 
And Gravis City Zone 11 will host the Pokemon Truck and X Series race. Um, there, it'll be the one mile temporary Roval. And then the Gravis City Zone 7 will be the host of the Pokemon Cup race. That's the three mile street course. So it's going to be a lot of fun next weekend. All in Gravis City. And we'll see you there as Joshua Sicully, Robert Smith win here today. Sicully wins. And so does Parker. So congrats to both on winning here in Suzuka. And we'll see you guys next weekend at Gravis City.